Hey guys, back in soggy Southwest Florida with the Polestar 2 all wheel drive dual motor. Been driving it in the rain for the past couple hours. Can't wait to tell you all about this fully electric car from Polestar. <laughs> If you guys have been living under a rock, you might not know Polestar is an electric subsidiary of Geely, which also owns Volvo. So Polestar kind of spun off as its own electric brand from Volvo. And if you look at the vehicle, it does have Volvo undertones and overtones for that matter. The design, the interior is very Volvo-esque. And this vehicle is actually made in China, but Later this year in 2022, the Polestar 3, which is a crossover, is going to be produced here in North America at the South Carolina Volvo plant. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, back to this vehicle. Coming around $52,000, it gives you a ton of performance. We have a 78 kilowatt hour battery. We have two motors, like I mentioned earlier, giving you a little over 400 horsepower and around 480 pound feet of torque. This thing does zero to 60 in the mid fours. There's also performance package, which if you want the adaptive dampers, the Olin suspension, uh, that'll cost you an additional $5,000 or so over this model, which is completely unnecessary. There's also a front wheel drive version of this car if you don't want or need all that performance or the all wheel drive capability. It costs $3,500 less than this vehicle. To me, get the double the power essentially for only 3,500 bucks, dual motors the way to go. Now this vehicle is actually a sport back. Yes, that does lift up, but we're actually gonna lift the, the hood first. Underneath this very masculine looking hood, of course we have that Polestar logo uh, and the paint color here. is an optional paint color? All paint colors besides the base silver cost you over 1,200 bucks, which is quite ridiculous. But we do have a nice jack here, a frunk where the charging cable was, and we have some additional fix a flat stuff Stuff in there as well. Uh, you can fill your washer fluid uh, and I do like we have dual latches here which is going to increase the rigidity of the vehicle. This feels like aluminum. It feels like a very light hood and we have dual shocks to host, hoist it up. Uh, the front of the vehicle does look pretty good. Very minimal overall as you would expect from a Swedish designed vehicle. This uh, Polestar brand is of course based in Gothenburg, Sweden, alongside of brother company, Volvo. The rear tail lights look amazing. I love that light bar that goes across. It's kind of like an industry uh, standard or an industry trend nowadays. Now, I don't know how to open up the trunk from back there. I probably should have Googled that, but there is a button right here also on the key fob that will lift the lift back. So it is motorized. That's a pretty nice feature. You can place some objects on top of this tonneau cover if you want uh, and we do have quite a bit of space in here now this lifts up for additional underfloor storage there's also this little piece here that will prop this up for you if you want to load this also a little 12 volt here if you want to plug in some accessories an additional hook uh, on each side as well as well as some netting so i'm going to put this down and you can of course fold down the rear seats uh, 60 40 and you also have that pass through so lots of functionality in this lift back design um, it is not actually based on an ev platform and here's one of the clues this is actually based off of volvo's let's see xc40 uh, xc40 and c40 platform i'll put what that platform's name is um, but we're going to get in the back here and one of the giveaways that this is not a, a fully electric platform is a huge drive shaft here must be carried over from the all wheel drive versions of the XC40. We do have a couple USB C's down there. Nice vents as well. Hard backs to the seats, unfortunate. Uh, I do have an okay amount of leg space back here, but nothing you would see like in an EV that is built on an EV skateboard platform, which that will be coming, like I mentioned, with the Polestar 3 later this year. But I'm gonna get out of this back seat and into the front seat. We have so much to talk about. Let's talk about the door panel here. We have this material that runs throughout this vehicle and yes when you get close to the and the keys are in there by the way the car doesn't have an on off button kind of like a tesla you get close to it and it turns on anyways you you walk away it turns off materials here are soft touch plastic but it actually feels really good it's uh, not something that you typically see in asian automakers that i fit, typically cover on the channel i love the fabric here overall very good design what's crazy is these mirrors are frameless and they're very small they're supposed to be aerodynamic you control them here um, i'll put some b-roll in there for you here as well now for 52 Okay, you guys get cloth seats. That is a little bit disappointing. And not only that, you have to use this rotary dial back here 
to adjust the uprightness of this portion of the seat. Very unfortunate. Now you do have memory seats, which is quite funny, but it's only going to um, affect the bottom portion of the seat. And notice that the, the vertical portion is left out on this model and it'll affect the lumbar. Yeah, you have lumbar control, but you don't have motorized vertical seat control. And the steering column is not tied to the memory system. You have a latch down here. Uh, so if you want leather seats, you're going to have to pay four grand for that. Or you can just get the plus package, which will give you synthetic leather, which they call like weave tech. Um, so that would be probably the option most people are going. And you won't have ventilated seats unless you get the ventilated Napa leather. But we're gonna get on the inside and man, is it a treat for the most part. <laughs> Very minimalistic interior. And the dash here has that additional um, texture that we have on the doors. This plastic grid or prism like material, we also have it in here. But if you get that plus package with the synthetic leather, this gives you a nice wood trim. So that's the way I would be going. Cup holder is in a weird spot. Just have to throw this at you guys because if you take your, your big Yeti with you or knock off Target brand, it is kind of in a weird spot. The volume is in a weird spot. And if this isn't here, you can kind of rest your arm like this, use the volume knob mess around here but unfortunately it's uh yeah it's just not the greatest setup here for functionality if you have a cup and a cup holder another cup holder back here now there is no panel roof in fact there's no sunroof in here i do like the headliner material but unfortunately you would have to get that plus package upgrade to a panel roof as well as like a heated steering wheel we don't have a heated steering wheel and there's also a ton of missing safety features in here that you would have to get on the pilot package so these buttons do nothing as well as these buttons on the steering wheel and by the way i really like this steering wheel feel Feels great in my hands it reminds me of a Volvo steering wheel but unfortunately this glossy black just collects fingerprints um, and half the buttons are not working because I don't have a lane tracing or steering assist for radar cruise control meaning I don't have radar cruise control at all I just have standard cruise control I also don't have blind spot monitor so check this out put it in reverse and it's been raining all day um, luckily this cleared up, but I'll put some B-roll in there of the camera not working very well when it's raining because it collects a lot of raindrops. Now, the side mirrors don't have blind spot monitor either, which is just nuts for a $52,000 car. So if I want to adjust the mirrors here, the mirror actually turns the entire thing if you want to adjust the mirror. It's not just the glass inside of the mirror, which I think it's pretty cool. And they, they said that that helps uh, reduce friction or improve aerodynamics. I did harp on these seats quite a bit. They are very comfortable despite them being cloth for 52 grand. Anyways, let's get into this screen. This is the first vehicle ever that I'm aware of that has Android at, or should I say Google Automotive for its operating system and it is fantastic. I love having Google Maps behind here. It's not the first time we've had Google Maps behind here. We've seen it in tons of products, especially the Germans throughout the years, but how uh, everything overlays this perfectly. I have a couple of different screens. I just press this button and I get no Google Maps, but just kind of the, the metrics that you need miles per hour, as well as your charge and how much power you're putting into the vehicle. Your range is there. Super awesome. I love this MID here. It completely negates the, the necessity of having a heads up display in my opinion. Now back to the center screen here. So we have a 12 inch screen here. We have 11 inch screen here. It does have uh, the app store or should I say the Google Play Store so you can download things uh, or different apps. I have Spotify on here. I've been listening to it a little bit. Now if you want the upgraded Harman Kardon, I believe it's Harman Kardon sound system, you're going to have to get that plus package which I'd be getting anyway. So that's thrown in there. This is your main menu button and that takes you to here. It'll say your projected range. And if you want climate control, you just press this little fan here. I just keep it on auto and just adjust this. I think it does a pretty good job. You also have your heated seat function here. Getting back to maps, this guy's is like, no, you just don't need Android Auto anymore because this is built into the car. Take me to Starbucks. Here's what I found for Starbucks. Like, what i mean it's faster than android auto i feel like as well which is saying something because that's already faster than everyone else's um, built-in navigation system so just a fantastic navigation experience and you have dual android auto screens so it's, it's just really cool you can also uh, adjust 
Um, your steering feel on here, you can adjust sport mode, which has been raining, so I'm not gonna commit suicide and fly this 50 plus thousand dollar vehicle off the road. You can turn on creep, I've turned it off, and I've been one pedal driving this whole time today. I've only touched the brakes like three times, so it's a very easy to modulate system. Talk more about that when we start driving the vehicle. Um, I got the vehicle in my garage yesterday morning at about 80% charge, just plugged it in, and you can control the amps that it takes. So. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff plugged into the outlet already, so I could have put it at like 12 or 15 amps, but I just kept it at 10 to kind of, I don't know, I'm not an electrician, but not overload that wall socket there in the garage. And it did charge it to 100% uh, by the time I was ready to drive this vehicle this morning. There's also over the air update uh, that I updated earlier. There's a notification. It took an hour and a half to do it, uh, and then it continued recharging after that. No wireless charger. You're going to have to get, I believe, the Plus package for that. Um, and I do really like this Polestar shifter here. Just the volume knob, like I mentioned, is in a weird spot. And I feel like I've summarized this interior pretty well at this point. I think it's time to start driving this 408 horsepower electrified monster. I wanted to mention one more thing about this seat before we get going. Well, we are going. But before I get into the driving impressions, as I was filming yesterday and I saw that the, between the console here and the seat that a little tab was off so I reached for it and tried to put it back because it just didn't look like it was connected in the right spot and I straight up sliced wide open my finger. Um, so it's unfortunate that for a 50 plus thousand dollar car that the seat connector wasn't connected properly and I just left it alone because I already cut myself open and now we can get into the driving impressions. Okay, so like any electric car, it's very quiet, very smooth and the one pedal brake, I haven't had a lot of experience in one pedal, one pedal driving I should say. Uh, on the channel. Uh, the, the next closest vehicle I've had experience with would be the Ionic 5 and that has multiple stages of regen braking and this does too which I'm not going to play with because I like this one pedal the way it is perfectly fine. I just feel like this is a really easy car to drive one pedal. The Ionic 5 it wasn't as natural to me and maybe because it was the first car I've ever done one pedal driving in but I had no issues. I feel like there is very little learning curve with the one pedal driving here on the Polestar 2. Ride quality is overall pretty smooth and it does kind of remind me of like the Volvo XC90 that I drove. Like it's smooth most of the time and then every once in a while you hit a piece of pavement that's not perfect and it's just like wow that was pretty harsh and rough but most of the time it's it's pretty composed and comfortable and just getting you along just fine. The throttle response because I can't call it like the, the fuel response so maybe the acceleration response in any electric vehicle that I've driven is fantastic and in this vehicle it is warp speed and like if you don't care about speed yes you could save $3,500 and um, you know go for the front wheel drive model but I feel like getting double the power for only $3,500 is like a no-brainer and you get the, the functionality of all-wheel drive. So all-wheel drive is definitely the way to go here. Performance pack, in my opinion, is definitely not needed. It does give you some cool Brembo brakes and it gives you, um, you know, the Olin suspension, which does seem pretty cool. And I do like the gold seat belts in it as well, but it's not a $5,000 upgrade in my opinion. Now you can adjust the steering as well as I let the pedal come to a brake here. And I'm, I'm not doing anything with my foot, so that was like the perfect brake modulation with me just pulling my foot off the, off the, the gas pedal. You can adjust um, the steering feel, standard, light, and firm. I've had it on firm since the beginning and I really, really enjoy it. So it's good to have that sort of customization here. Just gonna easily get in the throttle here. I'm not, I'm like at 70% maybe and yeah, I'm getting right back down because I went to 45 in an instant and it's like, oh yeah, 30 miles per hour. That's that's the power of electric cars. But when I was accelerating there, I hit that sewer cover and it's just like overly jarring. Remind me of the XC90 where it just surprises you every once in a while how harsh it can be under unperfect circumstances. Now the standard sound system in here is super loud. It's not the greatest quality, whether you're listening on like FM or Sir uh, like uh, Spotify. Sirius typically sounds a little bit better than FM and Spotify, at least in a car, but I don't have a subscription to it in this 
vehicle. So it does get super loud, but most of you guys are gonna be getting that plus package with a synthetic, synthetic leather and that will give you more functionality in this vehicle and a better sound system, the panel roof, uh, heated rear seats, etc. Luckily, we have a nice deep cup holder here in an awkward spot, albeit I've already harped on that, but it's nice and deep. So when you want to get into the accelerator and there's 55, like, <laughs> this is one of the quickest cars I think I've ever been in. Um, it makes me a little bit hot and sweaty in a good way and <laughs> makes me want to get into the climate control and play with the settings a little bit. But anyways, it is super quick, very responsive and for the average person, it's almost going to be nauseating um, if you're not expecting it because at any given time, hammer down and it's just warp speed. Um, and you don't, here's another thing is it feels really balanced. You don't get a lot of pitch and dive going on in the vehicle. It doesn't feel like it's flying, the, the, the front wheels are lifting. And when you're braking hard, I'm just going to turn here. When you're braking hard um, while I'm letting the engine do it or the motors do it, there's not a whole lot of um, pitch and dive on the other way as well. So I feel like compared to the Ionic 5, for example, and I'm just gonna like quickly merge here. That's a great thing about electric car. You can instantly merge into traffic. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, like the Ionic 5, it didn't seem as well balanced as this vehicle. It's definitely a softer ride overall, um, and it has a ton of power, not quite as much as this, but to the average person, they both feel like warp speed but like that vehicle suspension just didn't feel like it kept up with the really powerful dual motor setup um where the bz4x from toyota not nearly as powerful as either of the uh, this car or the ionic 5 or like the kia ev6 but it just felt more well rounded uh than the korean counterparts this vehicle feels very toyota like in terms of quietness and uh in terms of balance as well it doesn't feel Toyota-like in terms of minor fit and finish. Like, for example, not only did I slice my finger open, which Toyota literally has a baby test on all of their vehicles. And like, I can't believe I'm telling this story, but um, like when they're working with BMW, one of the things that drove the uh, German engineers mad over the Supra is that Toyota had this baby test where they run their fingers throughout the car. And if they get cut, that it's like an instant fail. Well, I thought that was a silly thing until it happened to me today. Well, yesterday when I was filming, I sliced my fingers straight open. So like, that's the sort of thing that I've never experienced in any other car before getting cut open just from playing around with the seats a little bit. Also, what feels a little unfinished is the back seats, like the rails where the, the track of the, the, the track of the seat that goes forward and back. I was getting in and out of the vehicle, no shoes, and all of the tracks and nuts and bolts around the seats are completely exposed, which doesn't seem to be very accommodating to your passengers. It just seems kind of rough and just kind of like this vehicle was slapped together and like it wasn't quite finished because those things I've never seen exposed on any other car before, let alone with that one that cost 50 plus thousand dollars. So Polestar, you got the driving dynamics down, the braking, the interior design, exterior design, you got that down, uh, you got the handling down, you got the, the powertrains down. We just need to get you to get your packaging right um, for the price. Like there's no way I should be paying extra when I'm already paying over 50K to get blind spot monitor. There's no way I should be paying extra to get a panel roof when I can get it standard on a 40 to $50,000 BZ4X. So I know there's no vehicle that's perfect. And the, dynam the di driving dynamics of this vehicle, I really wouldn't change much. It's not quite the softest of rides when you hit crazy pavement, but that's just like nitpicking. We just need to get you guys, I know you're a new brand, to, to just to tie up those minor finishing things of the, the, the seats that cut you, the seats in the back that seem unfinished on the floor, and the lack of like a fully power adjustable chair in a 50 plus thousand dollar vehicle. And the fact that I have cloth in here just doesn't sit right with me because I can get all these features on a $25,000 car that runs on gasoline instead. So uh, again, letting the braking do it itself.
foot's completely off the vehicle and look it like perfectly got me to the line like and it was very smooth so they've even tuned the braking so it just doesn't abruptly stop like the last mile or per hour or two it pulls back that braking feel so it doesn't like hurt and jerk you you don't get that teeter-totter effect when you come to a stop so it's very very good very happy with the driving dynamics like i said over and over and we have a <laughs> audi purplish pink what do you is that a periwinkle what color <laughs> i know it's probably not going to come over uh accurate on the gopro but yes the the colors you see here on vehicles down in south south florida is is ridiculous pink bentleys are not uncommon since we're at the front of this light when it turns green i'm just going to hammer it's fairly dry out all-wheel drive i don't have traction control off and i'll put roughly what the zero to 60 is i don't have my drag meter up but it should give you a good idea of zero to 60 in this vehicle the lack of safety features is one of the things that bothers me the most of this car like lack of radar cruise control lack of lane tracing and lane keep assist on the highway you do have like it does keep you in in off from falling off the road like a steering assist but it's not like a lane tracing assist with modern cars oh my gosh <laughs> okay there is 65 so i'll put what that is but it's just ludicrous i know that like tesla has a, a mode in some of their cars called ludicrous speed like it is just absolutely silly how much power you can get from electric motors and the sensation it gives you is so strange because you don't hear you hear slight whines going on from the motors but other than that it's like a completely silent it feels like a roller coaster just shooting you off but i've talked about how the lack of safety features for this price the lack of amenities uh like at least synthetic leather and in a pan or roof like just doesn't sit well with me so overall though like i can't believe polestar a brand new company is making vehicles that drive and feel this good and the android system here is absolutely phenomenal it's maybe my favorite setup in any car no not the placement of the volume knob thank god we have a, a volume knob but yeah nothing's perfect and there are some things that i could that would be very easy for me to live with in this vehicle uh, i just wish that there was more standard safety features being the most important thing uh, but i'm going to end it there thank you guys so much for watching my polestar coverage um thank you polestar for sending me this vehicle it's been a, a very pleasant surprise in a lot of ways and i know you guys are just getting started and i want to see you guys succeed in the future alongside of your brother company volvo i'm gonna do a little little u-turn here though <laughs> such smooth and direct acceleration but anyways i'll see you guys in the comments below if you enjoyed today's video hit the like button subscribe for more uh polestar yeah i do cover polestar news quite often so definitely stay tuned for more polestar news coming this year with the polestar 3 running out of the uh sand sand south carolina plant first polestar vehicle produced here in north america pretty exciting stuff and i know a lot of you guys just old school american people would like to have your your vehicles built here in america and yes we have that coming from polestar uh, in the meantime though this polestar 2 is a really really good car if you can live with its shortcomings so i'm gonna end it there thank you so much for watching